Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Happenings in the Dearborn Public Schools, or as we like to call it around the office, the Superintendent Show. I'm David Mustin, and Director of Communications for the Dearborn Public Schools, and joining me today, we have our guest, but of course, we also have our superintendent, Dr. Malenko. Dr. Malenko, how are you doing? Good. good? How are you doing, David? Good, good. Uh, I, it, we're, we're close to summer vacation. Yes. Close to wrapping up uh, your first full year as superintendent, yes. uh, uh, 20 years in the district, so you're no stranger to Dearborn, but it is your first year as superintendent. Um, just a gut feeling. How how's things gone this year for you? How do you feel? You feel good? You yeah, know? I I do. I feel really good, real positive. Um, again, we've you know I know uh, Board Trustee Petlichkoff's here as well. We're going to introduce her in a second, and the board's been very supportive. It's really been a positive partnership. I feel good about the fact that you know there has been a lot of hiring that's been going on, high level mm -hmm. positions, cabinet, high school positions, um, you know, principalships. But it's all positive, I look at it. There's been a positive, there's still people that have knowledge of the district over time, like myself, who have been here for a long time. Uh, we have you know, a combination of some internal people moving up. And, and so I've told the board too, you know, that it's also that four plus years I've experienced I had in human resources is helpful as we've really enhanced our hiring process. And I know we even did a show on the hiring process here, but it's been very busy. So we expect that to somewhat set, taper down next year as we move forward. Um, feel good about the fact that, um, you know, one of the things uh, uh, I was just thinking about the other day was this past Tuesday was a year since I had my first interview with the board trustees uh, for the position, one of four finalists at the time. And I was just reflecting on, you know, my uh, belief in really connecting with the students. And so I was, I keep track of all my school visits and I am now up to, at, including this school here today, Dearborn High, 366 <laughs> school visits. Uh, t my record in one day was 10 on the May 26th. <laughs> Seven was the previous record. But the reason I mentioned that is I think that's important. It's connecting with the students. I go there for multiple reasons. One may be a taping of a show here. One may be um, going through the classrooms and walking through and monitoring instruction and providing feedback or just providing positive support with the principals and teams. Other times it might be uh, a ceremony, like a Memorial Day ceremony or a parade. So ver a variety of reasons. And I just came back from Maples at 2 o'clock today for uh, an ensemble uh, concert. So, And I know we have Kathy Prouse who's retiring. We have a lot of our good people retiring. So feel good overall about it. And I know we're going to continue, you know, the positive into next year. So thank you for asking. Yeah, no, that's great. And I think it is important that when a superintendent walks into a building that people, and I don't mean this in a negative way, I don't, I, I think it's important that people don't go, oh, the superintendent, they should, you should be uh, as normal walk into a building as, as the principal or the teachers or whatever. I mean, all of us in administration, I think it's important that when we walk into a school, people know who you are and know why you're there and, and uh, are part of that environment because it is all about building those partnerships, right? And if I can add one thing I do, I mean, obviously you're in a high school, it's a big building, so not everyone's going to know that you were in there unless it was a ceremony. So one of the things, and you've helped me with, but we've really taken to that social media campaign, so we'll go and tweet or put a blog out, and then you've actually retweeted it out. So we have a way of just letting people know that not only myself, but cabinet members were visible out in the schools so and in the Great. community. So thank you. Well, it's all about building partnerships, yes. and that is what we are going to talk about a little bit here today. And as you mentioned, joining us, uh, board trustee Mary Petchlikoff, who wears many hats in our city, and uh, she'll explain her role uh, with our Healthy Dearborn Initiative as well. And uh, Ms. Deneen Charles, who is also wears many hats in our district. Uh, but your involvement right now is with a project that we are part of as part of a partnership between many organizations called Healthy Dearborn. And maybe could you could explain to us a little bit about what this is all about, who's involved, and, and what's, what's the goal of this Healthy Dearborn project? Sure, David. It's really a huge movement, and it's led by Betty Priscorn. She's the executive director over the Healthy Communities Initiative. And then, of course, we have Sarah Glacier. She's the project manager for Healthy Dearborn. So specifically, we are working on five specific action teams, and our goal is really to look at the Healthy Schools Initiative. That's one of the healthy teams to really look at how we can create a healthy environment for all of the students, for the parents, and even in the workplace within the schools. So that has been our charge, to really look at three goals and how can we move that so that the coming year can be healthier. 
for students, for parents, and for staff members. And Trustee Petlichkoff, uh, just to expand on that, I know that you do wear two hats. You're here as a board trustee, treasurer of the board, but you're also involved with the neighborhood associations. And I know the City Beautiful Commission as well. Uh, as I was mentioning those parades, well, I happened to be at two of them with you that, th that day that I hit the 10 school visits. Uh, it was a very nice day. But what is your involvement and in, in what do you think of this initiative with the Healthy, <clears throat> school, uh, Healthy Dearborn? Well, uh, thank you, Superintendent. Uh, you are correct. When I was initially invited to attend to this, it was as a um, president of the Federation of Neighborhood Associations because the intention was by Beaumont Hospital to uh, make sure that we connected with everyone in the community, be it a resident, uh, and somebody who came here to work, or uh, somebody who came here to find a, find a place to play. So they were trying to reach out to everyone in the community who had connections. They were delighted to find out that I wore two hats oh. because at the time <laughs> yeah. they didn't realize that I was also on the Board of Education. So uh, they, they got a twofer with me in, in having connectivity to the community. So we connect um, this message to both the um, community members through using um, uh, uh, hopefully uh, a very visible um, expansion of our um, student population going into the homes, being able to um, provide families with um, an educative platform about what their students and their home life should include in order to be um, living a more healthy lifestyle. And at the same time, that message also um, can be expanded into the neighborhood when um, even students who are not connected with their next door neighbors can provide this kind of information um, over the back fence, then you're connecting with the um, rest of the neighborhood as well. So we, we find that it's a very um, positive way to reinforce an environment that includes um, healthy lifestyles. Now, and I know, as Ms. Charles mentioned there, it's um, different committees. I know there's a whole committee that's looking at uh, transportation, improving uh, walking and, and bike riding and just getting around mm -hmm. the city. Um, there's a whole component on, um, and we're involved in that as well. Uh, I know our Director of Business Services, uh, Mr. Tom Wall, is involved in that a little bit and looking at a grant to uh, provide some uh, funds to create healthy uh, or to create safe walkways for if to go to schools and to get about the community. Um, Ms. Charles, specifically uh, with the schools initiative, what are the areas that we are going to be looking at in the schools? Is this just about, you know, uh, making sure the kids have healthy lunches, or does it go a little bit beyond that? Yeah, it includes healthy lunches, of course. Okay. And uh, Jeff Murphy, he's also a part of the committee for Healthy Dearborn. But we're really looking at a couple of things. Number one, you talked about the safe routes. So we're looking at healthy activity inside school, so during school, before and after. So safe routes to school would definitely take care of before and after. And then we're looking at during the school day, what is it that we can do um, in a unified way, especially starting in elementary school, to ensure that students are being active? We know that in elementary school, for the most part, they're in their classes, they do have a PE class, they do have recess, but during that class time, is it possible for us to have a brain break that only takes a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds, depending on what the activity is, just to get their brains moving, to get their limbs activated so that they can learn better? Because we know if they're healthy, then they can learn better. If they're healthy, they can work better. So if we can just look at ways that we can do that as a district, starting at the elementary level and then maybe move towards middle school, that will help satisfy one of the goals that we've established so far. And if I can add to that too, I know that I was at a meeting about a month ago that you were all att mm -hmm. attending and mm -hmm. I was asked to, to come and speak and I know that was <coughs> one of the things that at our table we talked about, it, um, you know, those breaks or those recess and I, I do know that, um, and I know Ms. Charles, you've seen, I know you've probably seen it through our board communications that we have taken an effort with Dr. Chokel and some of the other executive directors to, 
you know, implement more of a, a, f um, a standard recess pro uh, policy or guideline, not policy, but guideline in the district. And then talking about those brain breaks. So they've actually, the principals have actually been brainstorming ways to make that a reality because they have that under direct control. I know our pre board president Lane has also mentioned that, you know, about the importance and there have been some national reports on, you know, uh, children not getting that amount of time to get active uh, within the school. So I just thought I'd mention that as well, that I know that that's an area, I don't know if you had well, anything we're, to add we're to look, You know, we, we recognize and we have um, on this coalition, we have a number of parents actually um, who are participating um, as residents, current residents of Dearborn who are contributing on a variety of the teams. But I heard this um, from several of them that they want to make sure that the students are provided an opportunity to move as much as possible. We know that the um, classroom day is, is very tight and that the emphasis has been on structured learning. But that doesn't always work for every student. We recognize that they need the opportunity to vent a little and, and, and rele <laughs> release that energy, energy so that they can sure. then refocus yeah, for the day. But not every school was doing it the same way. And that was our um, pro challenge was to try to come up with some guidelines that would have everybody working towards the same goal, which was to enhance the classroom experience. But that had to um, have some kind of strategy to it, and that's what we're looking at now as to how do we encourage every classroom to be maintaining a certain level of activity, especially when we know that um, gym classes have been um, cut to some extent in order to get more classroom time in. We know that um, recess, quite frankly, kids are so anxious, you know, they, they rush through, eat their lunch, throw a lot of it probably away to run outside and get some outside time when the weather is permitted. You know, so those are kinds of things that we know that we need to be a little more hands-on than we have been in the past in order to encourage the kind of behavior that will promote a better learning environment. I'd say that's even true for adults. I mean, mm -hmm. just the movement. And, and I know at our general administrator's meeting, we're trying to model that with the principal so that we're doing that with staff. So if you come into right. a meeting, we're not sitting at tables all, for three hours. We're actually moving around. I know, David, you do a great job getting us going yes. with an activity every meeting, and we're trying to model that it's important for all learners. So if adults need that, we, we definitely know that students need you know, that aspect. Um, one thing I, I wanted to just point out too, kind of switching a little back to the safe routes. I know growing up, I mean, I think it was common that you'd either walk to school or like for me, it was a bike. And I, d I did hear something too about maybe even looking at bike racks or some other ideas where, right. you know, that you can get. That was suggested to me. A lot of the parents said their, their students would like to bike, okay. but they have no safe place to leave their bike, the bike at the it. schools yeah. anymore. Quite frankly, and this is where my history of being with the city for so long, um, all of our um, elementary schools were um, considered a walk to school. They were designed specifically to be the anchor in a neighborhood and they were meant to be a walk to school, not to drive your kid and drop them off in front of the door. So we want to encourage that type of behavior again, but the parents have to feel comfortable mm -hmm. with sure. that concept. And that's mm -hmm. something that we have to build into the educational experience of um, having that conversation with the parents that, that it's okay to let your to trust your student to um, get to the school on their own initiative. Because it'd be sure. safer too. I know we've had initiatives with the chief of safe routes to school, so let alone oh. healthy routes, but safe. Right. Because there's more a greater chance with that high level vehicular traffic of, of injuries or accidents. Oh, things. absolutely. You know, so as long as the neighborhood comes together to provide a safe environment for the students to walk through then that's something where the parents, I think, would be more comfortable in um, helping them participate. Well, and as you mentioned, you know, we do live in a very safe community, and uh, walking to school is, is how our schools were designed, for kids to walk to school, and the more they can do that, the better it is. It lightens the traffic around the school, which actually makes it even safer. So I know we'll be hearing a lot more about Healthy Dearborn in the weeks and months ahead. We look forward to a lot at um, the Dearborn Homecoming celebration in August. There'll be um, Healthy Dearborn will have its there will presence, be a down presence there. there yes. So we'll look forward to hearing a lot more information about Healthy Dearborn and all the initiatives that uh, it will be offering to the community. I know it's just another aspect of, of why being in Dearborn makes it a great place to live and work and play. So, 
ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. Dr. Malenko, any closing thoughts? No, I just think uh, it's a great initiative and uh, you know, I, th I appreciate the, you know, the support of Ms. Charles and uh, Trustee Petlichkoff and you, you're on the committee and you know, we look forward to uh, partnering with the city. I think the city's a important partner of ours and we're continue with that positive relationship. Sure, so. absolutely. So we're gonna stay healthy and uh, by wrapping this up and uh, so, cause I, I'm gonna have to stand up and move cause I've been sitting too long already. So that way I can keep, uh, keep going uh, as we do another one of these hopefully a little bit later. Um, Stay tuned, uh, happenings in the Dearborn Public Schools. We do a couple of these every month and you can catch them of course on YouTube, on our district cable channel as well. And there's always interesting topics, always interesting subjects to talk about in a district with 20,000 students in it. So until next time, take care.